All right, what's going on, everybody? It's Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video, and we got some breaking news. So it's been announced just about 30 minutes ago that Sony PlayStation has acquired Bungie for $3.6 billion. So there's a lot to unpack here, and I'm going to try to break it down. I'm going to give you my personal thoughts on this acquisition. I'm going to give you the pros and the cons about this. But first, what I want to what I want to start out with is to everybody on the internet, on the Twitter that was making these claims, the the fake insiders, oh, PlayStation's actually going to go after EA. It's going to go after Konami. It's going to go after Capcom. No, it's going to be Square. Please shut the hell up. Shut the hell up on behalf of all of us. Please, we are begging you because you know nothing. You have no insight or intelligence. You have no idea how the industry is going to actually move. Your Twitter account is literally nothing but a wishful thinking account. That's all you do is just throw shit up in the air and hey, maybe I might get something right, even though I have absolutely no detail as to what the moving parts are behind the scenes, what's actually happening. Hey, maybe if I throw everything against the wall, something might stick. But all you're doing is passing around misinformation. So can you please just shut the hell up and let things happen? And when they happen, just report it. Because I'm just, I'm just sick of sick of it. Honestly, you make me you make me sick. Shut up. You don't know nothing. You, you, especially when it comes to PlayStation and, and Sony like stuff, you always get it wrong. You never predict the right thing. So how many times do you have to be wrong before you shut the hell up? OK, that's number one. I just wanted to get that out the way. Now, the next thing. Right. So Bungie, we we all know Bungie has several games under their belt. They're most known for Halo. That's really what they gained their name off of. Right. They made Halo one, two, three, ODST and Reach. And then we know after that, three, four, three uh, took over. Right. They had this long relationship uh, with Microsoft during that during those time periods. Before that time, they worked on games like Oni, Myth 1, Myth 2, Marathon, Infinity. These were like PC games. Their early games in like the early 90s were, weren't even PC games. They were Mac games, right? And then in the late 90s, that's when they started working on Mac and PC games. Then they went on to, you know, get uh, Microsoft got them to make uh, the Halo series and most recently, they, you know, they became an independent studio. Um, and, well, they, you know, they were technically always independent because Microsoft never bought them. But they were, all their games were published by Microsoft. And, you know, Microsoft owned the Halo IP. And based on, I'm pretty, based on what I know, um, Destiny, the, uh, Bungie owns the Destiny IP. But Activision at the time, um, during Destiny 1, published it for them. Um, and then Destiny 2, I believe, they self-published that game themselves. So they're not a publisher, which to me is a a, a good side of this. Because like I said, I'm going to get into the pros and the cons. I just wanted to break down the games they've made, right? And as far as like what they own and their assets, the IPs they own, they don't own much. The only thing they really own of value is pretty much Destiny and, and Destiny 2 because they obviously don't own Halo and anything before that isn't really relevant, right? So that's really all, all they own. That's really what their value is right now. So first of all, let me get this out the way, right? As far as the, I'm gonna start with the cons. The first con is I absolutely hate Destiny as a game. I despise that game. If the, you couldn't pay me to play that game, and I and I mean that quite literally, if someone walked up to me and said, hey, I'll give you $100, 200 300 400 500 to play Destiny, I would refuse it. Now, listen, don't, don't get it twisted. I have a price. I can absolutely be bought. I'm not even going to front on you and be like, there's no amount of money. But no, it would have to get eight, 800 and beyond. I'm probably I'm probably fold. I'm like, 800 Well, how long do I have to play? You know, that that's I'm gonna start asking questions at 800. But below that, I'm not I'm not even looking at you in your face. I'm not even going to acknowledge that you're there. Right. Because that's how much I really despise this 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 dry 
this this paint drying on the wall game because I, I find Destiny extremely boring. It's corny. It's dull. People love it. It, it has a, it has a huge fan base. I I absolutely know that, right? But to me, I I hate the game. Can't stand it, right? So that's an obvious con. But I'm not that short sighted to to evaluate a whole acquisition based on the, that the current game that they're making and supporting. I don't like it. Obviously, there's way more to an acquisition than that. So um, let, let's keep going. Con, obviously, like I said, I hate Destiny. The next thing is that I hate is this promotes the back and forth arms race. Now, like I said, um, they're not a publisher, right? They published Destiny 2, but they're really not a publisher. They're a developer. That, that was their first time publishing a game, right? So th even though that like... Um, I, I I hate this. I, I'm okay with anybody buying developers. You know, Microsoft like when Microsoft bought up like before the Bethesda and before the the uh, Activision thing when they bought like I don't remember how much it was like what 15 studios or something like that, 15 developers. I'm like I don't, that's fine. I don't care. Buy as many studios as you want. Like I'm I'm all for that. That's great. No problem. Like to me, and I've said this multiple times, is when you start buying up publishers is when that gets a little, that's when that gets a little bit weird to me, even though I'm, I was completely fine with um, Microsoft buying Bethesda because Bethesda was failing and flailing in the wind and their games needed to be saved, right? Um, so I was fine with that. But like I said, I just don't want this publisher uh, arms race going back and forth. Um, and, and, I, and I honestly hate the, the conversation when I go on Twitter. I hate when the conversation is just mainly... Uh, about acquisitions. I actually had the word acquired acquisition, any form of it, muted. I had it muted for a long time. And I'm talking about like when when I'm talking about all last because Sony Sony acquired like what five studios last year. I got tired of hearing about acquisitions. So I muted the whole word. Of course it's still you know you still saw a post about it. But I, I got, just got tired about the conversation. I want the conversation where I go, go on Twitter to be mainly about the games, but people get obsessed with the whole acquisition conversation and that got on my nerves. And I want the industry to be more about like the games and stuff like that and not this back and forth arms race about acquiring whatever, right? So that's another con. Also, this seems to be more of a business move for me in, in, in my view, more than it is for the player, right? It's because it's, I just don't really see what this necessarily does for directly for the PlayStation gamer, right? It, it could right at this moment. I don't see what it does for the PlayStation gamer. And I'm going to read uh, some of the quotes um, that, that they mentioned about how they're, uh, how they're approach, how they're approaching this. All right, so let me read this um, article from IGN. I got a bunch of uh, you know articles open, but as it says, Sony um, Interactive Entertainment announced it, it will require uh, Destiny developer Bungie for 3.6 million. Uh, GamingIndustry.biz reports that the following deal: Bungie will be ran as an independent sub uh, subsidiary of SIE and will remain a multi-platform studio with the option to self-publish as they're doing now and reach players where they choose to play. Right. That can you could break down that whole sentence it, itself, and it could mean a bunch of different things. Um, so pretty much, you know, obviously they're not going to remove Destiny from any platform that it's on. I didn't expect that, and I don't. I don't think they they should, right? As far as future IPs, and I've been told they're working on a new game that we don't know about right now. Um, that's up in that's up in the air because they are yeah it actually says it right here the company is also working on a new IP, um, but apparently Sony if this is true Sony is leaving it up to Bungie to remain autonomous and decide uh, where they want to put their games and um, <laughs> and reach players where they choose to play which is. Kind of strange, which is not something Sony usually does, um, at, at least for future projects. We don't question, right, when Sony has ownership, if something is going to be multi-plat or exclusive. That seems to be up up in the air right now. But my point, like, like I said, going back to my original um, bullet was like, hey, I, I just don't necessarily see what it does for the PlayStation gamer right now.
right? Okay, it just seems to be more for business. It's a, it, you know, it's a Destiny's a big game. A lot of people, a lot of people play it. It, it makes money. It seems mostly be, mostly to be a business move as of right now. The next thing is, so, well, that's that's really all my cons, right? I don't I don't like Destiny. I don't like the back and forth fourth arms race. It seems to be more of a business move right now, right? I see some people saying like, oh, Des but Bungie is washed. I don't just I don't agree with that. Um, and it's a waste of time and money. I don't agree with that. Um, like, I don't know where the sentiment that Bungie is washed. Like, I have I have no reason to believe that unless y'all can point something out to me, right? I don't like Destiny. Like I said, you can't pay me to play Destiny, right? I don't think it's a fun game, right? I don't think the loop of the game is good. But I don't think Destiny is like like categorically trash like it's just a bad game i just think the the play design i guess and the loop of the game is bad i don't think it's fun i don't think it's enjoyable it's just not that for me this i don't and and i, I guess i don't really enjoy most looter shooters but i absolutely believe if bungie designed some other type of game that outside of that genre, that they would make something of quality. I have no reason to believe that they're a bad developer, right? And I don't think anybody has ever named Bungie a bad developer. They made the best Halo games, right? And and you could see, you could make the argument, yeah, that was a while ago, right? Because that was from 2001 to, two, to 2010, right? Cool. But they still made the best Halo games. You can argue whether or not that staff is there or not. Um, like destiny is destiny is what it is. Like I said, it's not my type of game. I hate it for what it is, but it's not like this bad quality game, right? Which leads me into the, into the pros, because I do think there are pros of this acquisition, right? So Bungie is 600 developers. As of 2019, they had 600 developers. I saw somewhere that, that they said that they said Bungie actually has 800 developers right now. Like I said, I don't know if that's true, but it, you could probably assume that if they had 600 developers in 2019, they grew from then. So that's a pro for me because there are studios that are like 300 developers that work on multiple projects, two, even sometimes three. If you got six to 800 developers, you should definitely be working on 300 projects. I mean, 300 projects, excuse me, three projects at a time. And you should be able to hand. That's really like, that's 800 developers is really like three studios, depending on the scale of the project you're working on. So that's something that excites me, right? If you're working on something non-Destiny or multiple things that are non-Destiny, and we know you have experience in the multiplayer field of things, because of Destiny and because of Halo, then that potentially excites me. Anything non-Destiny, I can get ex I can get excited for, right? And you already know I like Halo. Like I'm I'm, I'm a fan of, I'm a fan of Halo, especially the multiplayer. Not you know y'all know I, I beat all the single players, but I'm not crazy about the story. I'm not crazy about Halo single player and all that. But I'm a fan of the multiplayer. And yes, y'all know the main thing I've been calling Sony out for and PlayStation out for make more multiplayer games you need more multiplayer games and they've been addressing it deviation studios that that uh, they're working on a multiplayer game london studios uh is working on a multiplayer game there's that twisted metal game coming out fire sprite um jade raymond they gave her a studio to make some multiplayer game factions is coming eventually so they're addressing it it's just none of it is here right now it's coming within the next two to three years and, I, and we apparently gotta wait for it right so if they're working on another another multiplayer game, that that's great, right? So the the number of developers is a pro for me. The next thing is they have experience and talent. That's that's clear, right? One of the things even though once again I hate Destiny, one of the things I'm impressed by is the fact that they actually supported the game. One you hear claims all the time about when a what when a studio makes a game, a multiplayer game or games as a service, oh, we're going to support this game for, for this time and this time. Yeah, okay. I'll believe it when I see it. They actually supported, supported this game. And that's, that's impressive to me because I don't think most carry out that claim and that obligation when they say they're going to do it. I see all the time. I, I mean, I don't keep up with it, but 
I always see, oh, this uh, this raid and this uh, Destiny Witch DLC and this this update and all. They've supported the game. I can't take that take that away from them, right? So I'm impressed by the fact that they've actually supported supported their games um, in a multiplayer space where many don't many many fail at that. Like I said, they made the best Halo games. Take that for what you will. Um, like I said, I'm glad they're not a publisher because I'm not with this publisher back and forth acquisition. Um, they definitely have experience and talent. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody could take away the fact that they, the studio has experience and talent. And as far as we know, we have no reason to believe like that experience just evaporated or something like that. Even, even if you want to say the, 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 you know, the peak of their talent or their you know, their best time was during the Halo days. You got to understand that, like, that talent, even though people leave, people move on, it's not the same people, that gets passed down. Like, people get taught different things. That's that's honestly what, how it happens within a lot of these studios. Like, when you look at the head and the lead game developers of a lot of, like, these PlayStation studios, a lot of them started out as nobodies. Like, look, Corey Barlog started, started off next to... uh next to David Jaffe, you can go, you can go see Corey Barlog like 20 years ago, working with David, working with da with David Jaffe. Um, and he wasn't, you know, when I use nobody, the word, the term nobody very loosely, you know, he wasn't a nobody, but he definitely what wasn't what he was now. He definitely wouldn't have been able to make, uh, this got lead this God of war and make the God of war that he made in 2018, you know, 20 years ago, he didn't have that experience. You know, that wasn't, he wasn't cultivated yet, right? So that happens. So I have no reason to believe that that doesn't that hasn't happened within you know Bungie as a studio. I expect the people that were uh, you know the head of the studios twenty years ago that they've taught and trained and built up people and the talent and experience to to lead the studio now. So unless somebody, like I said, unless somebody can point out to me that this studio and is absolutely washed and they don't know what they're doing as a development studio. If you could point it out and give me an examples, listen, I'll, I'll recede. I'll give you that. Okay. They're trash. They're washed. Cool. Right. But I have no reason to believe that now. So this is the first time Sony has spent in the billions as far as an acquisition goes that, that I I'm aware of, at least I'm pretty sure this is the first time. And they spent 3.6 billion as I, as I've already mentioned. Um, in, in comparison, Microsoft bought Bethesda for, 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 uh, 7.5 billion. There's no reason to compare this to the Activision thing, which was, what was that? 70 billion. Um, and Insomniac was what? 220 million. Now you could absolutely make the case. <laughs> Listen, and I'm not going to argue with you. Insomniac is a way better developer than Bungie, Right. When, when you have, and listen, I'm not one of these dudes who, who tries to act like a, like a, you know, an analyst or a financial, you know, advisor or whatever, but just looking at it from surface level and I'm like insomniac for 20, whatever, I might, I might be off with the number. I, I think it was a two, like around 200 million insomniac for 200 million bungee for, for 3.6 billion. And I'm looking at what, because, you know, a big part of, like, the price is what you own. And as far as I know, okay, Insomniac didn't own much. They, they didn't. They worked on a bunch of stuff, but then they didn't own really much. I don't know. I don't know if Insomniac owned anything they really worked on, right? Because they mainly made stuff for PlayStation. I think PlayStation owned it. And um, the few things they did outside of PlayStation, I don't think they, they owned any of that they own any of that either well no actually they, they i think they did own sunset overdrive because now playstation owns that so but they didn't own much so when you're looking at um what what bungie owns and like as far as i know bungie only only owns destiny so is the difference from what insomniac owns to what bungie owns is that the difference of of billions not that i exactly see but once again I don't know the ins and outs and how to like truly analyze the worth of a company, right? Um, you could probably make the argument that Bungie also brings in more money than Insomniac. That's 
that's entirely possible. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not one of these pretend analysts, but I'm just looking at it from the, from the surface level. Um, and also, can we can we, can can we stop this narrative that like PlayStation and Sony doesn't have any money to spend on an acquisition? Of course, we know they're not going to spend nothing near seventy billion like like the Activision thing. But there were people literally saying that Sony couldn't even buy something in the billions, and I'm like, and I. I even knew that's simply not true. Of course, they could buy something in the billions. How far in the billions? I don't necessarily know that, but they can definitely spend in, in the billions. So hopefully, you know, like, sh shut up with that narrative. Y'all y'all don't know what y'all are talking about. Um, and, you know, like, it, it's kind of, it, this is not shocking to me. I don't think this acquisition is shocking because PlayStation had a good relationship with Bungie. PlayStation literally locked down uh destiny dlc the, the the dlc for the original destiny game sony locked it down until destiny 2 came out if i remember that correctly do you know how absurd that is and how egregious that is like how are you gonna lock down dlc or content or whatever it was for a game you locked it out of xbox so that the the only the next time that xbox could actually get content for for destiny was when the sequel for Destiny was out. So it was like, oh, you want to play Destiny sequel? Okay, we'll, we'll be on the sequel. We'll, you want to play content for Destiny the original now? Okay, well, now the sequel's out. Like, that's kind of wild to do that type of shit. And, you know, it, it, Sony just took advantage of the opportunity when Bungie went independent. Like, okay, y'all independent from, from uh, Microsoft? Okay, what are you working on next? Okay, let's work together. And that's, that's what they did. So this is not, this is not exactly, you know, shocking but it wasn't like it wasn't uh something that people had on their bingo card you know people always go with the obvious pick when it comes to these acquisition talks and this is why i said like listen y'all always go with with the basic the basic response and that's something else i can appreciate appreciate about this it's not the basic like like knee-jerk reaction i talked about it in my last video i don't want a knee-jerk reaction you know, uh, from PlayStation. Oh, you, you derp derp. You bought M Microsoft bought uh, Activision. Okay, we gonna buy Capcom, Square, Oko, or EA. Like, no, you you got to move differently. You got to move like you got you got to move like you're playing chess. You got to move smart, right? So, I just think really examining and 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 like really reviewing this acquisition is not easy right now for me I, I i i really gotta see what comes next i i gotta see what they make next because you know the these are all of this is selfish it, it's really how it helps me out as the as the gamer and you don't have you don't have a game right now that i care about so if the next game you care about the next game you make, I still don't care about it. It's like, well, this isn't benefiting me as the gamer. I couldn't give two shits about this. You know, it's it's the same thing. Why I feel like, um, why why I I feel like, goddamn, uh, what you call it? Why Media Molecule is such a waste of space because they don't make any games that I like. Okay, Little Big Planet, I think that's trash. Dreams, that's trash. And when I say trash, it's just not something I care about or something I like. So you're a waste of space to me. You're not. You're not. G gaming is selfish. This is all about what benefits me personally as the gamer. That's what it's all about. So if you're not making stuff that benefits me, then to me, you're a waste of space. So, um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's really my, my breakdown of this. I mean, Dest so destiny two sold like what 2 million in, in like a few days back in 2017, you know, that, that's, that's okay. Um, I, I know, I don't know the, the recent number, but I know it sold it sold a lot more millions um since then i i know that for a fact and people always uh say oh destiny 2 has some of the destiny has some of the best shooting i mean i disagree with that but people always that's what people the shooting is is the best in 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 gaming i'm like no i i disagree um it's just the shooting in destiny is just not satisfying to me at all so yeah th those are my thoughts on it those are my thoughts to to recap i 
I disagree with this sentiment that they're a washed studio, you know, like people calling LeBron the washed king. I disagree with disagree with that. I think they bring a lot of uh, experience and, and talent. I just think they have to apply it to a genre and a, and a type of game that I would personally um, enjoy. Um, and uh, it, it's kind of a wait and see. I got to really see what their next their next project is. But I also am still happy that PlayStation has not bought a publisher because I, once again, do not want them to buy any publishers. So, yeah, let me know what y'all think about this. Um, I'm glad they have a lot of developers, um, you know, under a lot of developers in, in-house because they better be working on multiple projects because that's what PlayStation needs. That's one of the things I said in my previous video is they need... They they don't need a they I'm against buying publishers, but you should be buying developers with high developer counts um, so they can work on multiple projects because that's how you're going to increase your output. You need to increase your output, your frequency in which games are released, so on and so forth. So let me know what y'all think about this, man. Hit the like button. Um, have y'all been been enjoying this, this this long form version of videos? I'm wondering. Um, but yeah, hit the, hit the like button, uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of Twitter spaces about this today. Um, hit the notification bell. I'll be forgetting sometimes hit the notification bell. So, you know, you can know anytime I upload a video or, or go live and, uh, I will catch y'all on the next video. Check out the last episode of weapon wheel. Check out the next episode of Weapon Wheel this Sunday. We'll obviously be talking about this and, and evaluating this. I'll catch y'all. I'm out of here. Peace.